So you might remember that viral photo editing application called Prisma. Well, Portrait does a very similar thing, but in a lot of ways it's even better. So you simply take a portrait of yourself or upload something from your gallery to the app. And from here, you can apply a whole series of different watercolor effects. And these are stark contrast to the original photo. They come out with a very unique aesthetic, almost only created by this application. Next up by Microsoft is the Edge browser. Now Microsoft has recently done a bit of a revamp when it comes to how they present themselves on the Android platform, and safe to say it's for the better. It carries a lot of the styling and presentation present on the larger desktop version, and even compared to the infamous Chrome browser for Android, in some cases this felt faster. This is due in part to good optimization, but also some smart caching of pages. It also supports most of the standard desktop features such as a reading list, your bookmarks, and it has some gesture features as well specifically for Android. And something you're only going to get using one of Microsoft's own applications is the ability to carry on where you left off, between the Edge browser on your phone and the Edge browser on your Windows PC. Something that I've been really enjoying over the last couple of weeks is the Pixit icon pack. It takes the basic design language from Google's own pixel icons, but then it alters them in quite an interesting and subtle way. The core elements of the icons pop out of the main body of the icon, leaving you with a set of primarily circular icons for uniformity, but at the same time with slight alterations to keep it interesting. It's got just over 5,000 icons here, which is good. It's not the best, but it does also have an icon request tool. And from what I've tried, they seem to respond pretty quickly. The next one is Launchboard, and it's a bit of a fusion here. It is in some ways an app drawer, and in some ways a dedicated launcher. But what it tries to do is simple, it tries to allow you to open your applications much quicker. So opening Launchboard presents you with a little keyboard at the bottom of your page, and you simply type in the first letter of your application, and it'll show you a small section containing every one of your apps starting with that letter. Which sounds very simple, but that's almost the beauty of it. Okay, so it's not very often that Google releases a new in-house application of its own, and it's always exciting when it does. So they've recently come out with Files Go, which is an all-in-one file management tool that tries to free up space on your smartphone. So it's filled with cards that'll suggest smart ways that you can clear up space. Everything from giving you notifications for apps you haven't used in a long period of time, to frankly just clearing out some of the trash that apps will just build up. Now, a pretty subtle feature that Google integrated in this, which they didn't really brag about but they probably should be doing, is the fact that this can send and receive files very quickly. Two people who have the application can send each other files at a speed of up to 125 megabits per second, without internet. Inspired by LG's V30 smartphone, we have the floating bar. Now, this is pretty much exactly what it says on the tin. You can add a whole suite of different things you want this bar to display, such as your recent applications, your most used, or your music that's currently playing, tools, weather, and more. And when it's active but not being used, it does a pretty good job of hiding away. It's just a translucent bubble that you can just slide into one of the corners of your smartphone. And tapping it once will open up the bar in front of any application you've got running, and tapping anywhere else will close it again. Another pretty cool application that I stumbled across over the last few weeks is the S8 Colorburst Live Wallpaper. And it interacts with your touch, it shows a whole series of particles kind of favoring the higher end devices with a little bit more GPU power, and it's very, very impressive visually. It would help actually if it was a little bit higher resolution, but the effect itself is not something you can replicate with anything else. You can fire these particles across your display every time you swing your thumb across. You can create tornadoes with them, and you can even assign different properties to the particles, which actually affect intrinsically how they behave. Adding on top of that the ability to customize colors as well as the background gives you quite a lot of flexibility here. Okay, this one is very different. This is Rave. It allows a group of people to get together, form a party, and watch videos online together. It creates a chat room where you can communicate about the content you're watching, making it a little bit more of a social and interactive experience. And what I think is cool is it allows people to vote on which content they want to see next. And this is not just limited to YouTube videos. You can link this to your Netflix account. You could binge watch TV shows together. You could watch Google Drive videos that you've uploaded yourself, perhaps your holiday videos from abroad. This doesn't feel like a finished application, but as a working concept, it is a great idea. The next app is something I would class as interesting and worth seeing, as opposed to something I would personally like to use. But essentially, the Edge Mask creates a curved effect to your display. It makes it appear as if your display is melting over the sides of your phone, when actually you can have a completely flat screen. And from most angles, it's a pretty convincing effect. The only thing I would say is it kind of falls flat on its face when you run applications horizontally. Maybe that'll be fixed in an update. Next up is Focus Go. It is an alternative to the default gallery you may have built into your smartphone, and it makes quite a lot of sense. 
It is a fast, high-performance gallery with a couple of high-end features. It allows you to decode pictures in slightly higher quality than you might see on competing galleries, you can organize pictures in any way you want, and also it has a powerful built-in editor. If you're the kind of person who just wants things to be easy, who doesn't want to have to take a photo on their phone, only then to transfer it to their laptop, edit the photo, take it back to their phone, and then to upload to something like Instagram, this kind of does make the job a little bit easier. Most of the basic tools you would find on a desktop editing program are here, and they work. Thanks a lot for watching guys, if you did enjoy the video as always it would mean so much to me if you could smash that subscribe button. My name is Aaron, this is Mr Who's the Boss, and I'm signing out.